them rise. Rise and live again as my fist of vengeance, as my moon knight. Welcome in, true believers, to the inaugural episode of Antiheroes Bar With No Name. My name is Avery, and I sometimes go by Antihero Comics, and today I will be your comic book cocktail connoisseur. So you may be asking, what is the bar with no name? It's a place of scum and villainy. Well, that's another franchise, but it's all owned by the same mouse, however. I'm actually going to be making some cocktails, mocktails, concocting them, creating original recipes, adapting classic cocktails, based on the comic book characters we all know and love. I figured for my very first cocktail, I would go easy on myself and make a cocktail based on the least complex and least challenging comic book character in pretty much all of comics. He also just so happens to be one of my favorite comic book characters of all time. He goes by Mark Spector, Jake Lockley, or Stephen Grant. That was really bad. But what you might know him most by, Moon Knight. Let's get into it. All sarcasm aside, Moon Knight is actually a fairly complex character in the comic world. Created by Doug Munch and Don Perlin in 1975, Moon Knight first appeared in the Werewolf by Night 32. He was first introduced as an antagonist towards the Werewolf by Night, but in this book, particular in the three-part series that comes out after it, he actually whoops his ass and he hands it to him pretty well. However, Moon Knight wouldn't really become popularized in comics until his first solo series, Moon Knight Number no. 1, written as well by Doug Munch and drawn by the Billy Goat, one of my favorite artists, Bill Sienkiewicz. I think I'm saying both of those names right. They are very hard to say. Anyway, he would go on to have his 38 issue solo series. And this is the series that really started diving into his split personalities, his disassociative identity disorder, making him a much more complex character than just the anti-hero we see him in Werewolf by Night. Moon Knight would actually go on to have several of his own solo runs that are all actually very, very good. My personal favorite run of his is the 2005, I believe, the Huston and Benson run. Uh, I believe both of them were writing it. Some of the covers are drawn by uh, Finch. They're really remarkable. I have that one back there. He would go on to cameo in a lot of different popular characters at the time throughout the Bronze Age in their own runs. Essentially kind of make a name for himself as a very complex anti-hero. So with all that being said, without further ado, let's make the Disassociative Knight. The ingredients we'll be using in the trusty short box of booze and other ingredients. We are going to start with the ABK6 VSOP Cognac. It's actually a very mellow cognac. It mixes very well in cocktails, a very good entry level cognac. Next is your green chartreuse, bartender's favorite. A very complex liquor, it has over 130 herbs and botanicals. They say that the recipe is only known by two Charthusian monks at a time. It's a pretty hard bottle to come by, but at the same time, if you find it, no matter how expensive it is, I say pick it up because it goes very well in a lot of good cocktails, make last words, stuff like that. Next, we have a staple behind the bar. You have your dry orange curacao. There's lots of different curacaos you can use. You can even use triple sex most of the time to replace them. I'm using Pierre Ferrand's orange dry curacao. I tend to like this one a lot. It's a very well-rounded orange curacao. We will be using some bitters. We're gonna be using our black walnut bitters by the Fee Brothers. Now the Fee Brothers make a long line of flavored bitters, different flavored bitters. I tend to always go for their bitters, but you can just use basic Angus Oro bitters, or you can use Peychaud's 15, whatever bitters that are accessible to you, I say go for. And you can even use a different flavor in this. They have like Aztec chocolate, rhubarb I've seen, cherry bitters. It's a very complex drink already. It might get a little lost in it, but I'm confident that the black walnut is pretty good in it. We will also be adding some Demerara syrup. It is a different mouthfeel than normal simple syrups, almond syrup and everything like that, because of the molasses. So it's a little more rich, has a different mouthfeel. It adds a little more texture to your cocktails. And we have some freshly squeezed lemon juice. Always squeeze your own lemon juice. Do not buy the bottled stuff. It is crap. You don't want crap, necessary. Lastly, some tea that you can get at the grocery store. I'm using yogi tea, not just any tea though. I'm using Egyptian licorice tea. 
the theming is on brand. You gotta get Egyptian licorice tea for Egypt's favorite vigilante. Now it is quite the list of ingredients, I get it. And it's probably not accessible to most people, but if you can happen to go out and just try to get something, some similar stuff, these ones are pretty easy. You can find orange curacao anywhere. The most entry level cognac, this one's not that expensive. This one is going to be the hard one to find, the green chartreuse. It's just out of stock all the time everywhere. If you can find the yellow chartreuse, it's actually a little more mellow. It adds a different element. I actually kind of wanted to use it in this cocktail, but I only had green chartreuse. I've seen people supplement chartreuse with uh, ver. You can find that, that's a little more accessible in your stores. But complex list of ingredients for a complex character. I had to do my Mooney some justice. So let's start crafting. So we're gonna start building it. First, we're gonna do one ounce of your cognac. Next, we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce of your green chartreuse. Next for the spirits, we're gonna do our half ounce of our orange dry curacao. Then we're gonna do a half ounce of our fresh squeezed lemon juice, squeeze your citrus. Next, we're gonna add our Egyptian licorice tea. Like I said before, you don't need to find the Egyptian licorice one. It's actually a really good tea anyway, but if you find any other like herbal tea that kind of goes well with these ingredients, go for it. If you are following along and making this recipe at home. We're gonna do one ounce of our tea to sweeten it up just a little bit. The tea is pretty sweet already, but we're just gonna do a quarter ounce of the Demerara syrup. Lastly, two to three dashes of your bitters of choice. I'm using black walnut bitters. After all the ingredients are in, you're gonna get your small little cheater tin. You're gonna fill that with ice. I find that the small little cheater tins that come in the shaker sets, um, it's appropriate amount of ice for dilution and everything like that. So I would just fill this one up with your ice, build your drink in the big one, you're set. You're gonna wanna close it up nice and tight. And you're gonna wanna shake this cocktail for about 15 to 20 seconds, pretty vigorously. I always try to freeze my glasses, regardless of if I'm gonna put ice in them or not. It makes for a better drink. I actually went a little fancy on this one. It's a little frosty. I did it with some diagonal ice. Split ice, if you will, because, well, split personality. We're all about theming here at Anti Heroes Bar with No Name. You're then gonna double strain it into a glass, or just strain it if you don't have an additional strainer. So after the drink is poured, we're gonna garnish it. I'm gonna garnish it with a lemon peel, not just any lemon peel, a crescent moon shaped lemon peel. You can even shave off an additional one that you're not gonna be cutting up and give it a nice little spritz for some aromatics and some oils to be espressed over the cocktail. We will then garnish it with our crescent moon garnish. There you have it, the disassociative night. It's a very complex drink, has lots of ingredients, but I do think the outcome is going to be worth it. Uh, let's give it a taste. Excelsior and cheers. I'm gonna try it again. It is complex. You can taste all of the flavors in it. It is a little lemon juice forward. The citrus does cut a lot of the sweetness of the cognac, but at the very end, you get that Egyptian licorice tea. So I don't know if other teas are gonna work quite as well. That has a lot going on with it. The orange curacao is very, very subtle. The black walnut bitters are very, very subtle as well. But the green chartreuse really comes through and it goes really well with the cognac. When I was creating the recipe, its influences were kind of like, almost like a sidecar mixed with like a Champs Elysees, which features green chartreuse. Sidecar being my favorite classic cocktail of all time. My lovely partner, would you like to try the Dissociative Night? Okay, there you go. It's quite mellow. Yeah, the licorice comes in at the end. It's super interesting. That, so I think that tea just works really well with it. It definitely has the licorice coming at the end. I like it. It's good. Complex drink for a complex man. It's just a good cocktail. I put it on my menu. I'm not biased though. That will wrap up the inaugural episode of Anti Heroes Bar With No Name. Again, I'm Avery. I appreciate you all for following along. Be sure to comment down below any character ideas that you want to see turned into a cocktail, mocktail, and I'll do my best to make it happen. And always remember, drink and nerd out responsibly. Till next time, true believers.